Hey y'all, it's Whitney Shattuck from the First Grade Roundup and I'm going to talk about my best-selling math walls in my TPT store. These have been around for um, a while since I started um, selling on TPT back in 2011 and um, I've redone them in the last couple of years um, to kind of give them a nice little update. Um, they're available for first and second grade and kindergarten's coming soon. Hopefully it'll be done sometime in August 2016. But today I wanted to talk to you about how to navigate the math wall, how to use it um, effectively in your classroom. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of background of um, the navigation and why um, <clears throat> this can be an issue sometimes. So whenever I first um, started doing math walls, um, I met the district I taught in was using Active Inspire flip charts for Promethean boards. And so we used the math wall in there and they worked fine. Um, and then I moved to a district that did not have Promethean boards. They had star boards, I think, and the software for Starboard um, is just not as good as the others that I've seen. And I just could not get the math wall to work correctly without having to redo it completely. So what I decided to do was to make it in PowerPoint so it could be um, used sort of universally for any sort of smart board. So um, that's what I did. I made it interactive PowerPoint, which I love um, because almost everybody has access to PowerPoint at school and um, it makes it a little bit more accessible for people. The problem is with PowerPoint um, that um, trying to do all of the interactive things that you want to be able to do on PowerPoint, okay? So the issue is that um, on your slideshow view, um, where am I at here? On your slideshow view, you can annotate in PowerPoint. Just like you, if you were using a smart board, you could use your pen. You go down here to the pen, click pen, and then you can write. Okay, but you cannot move any objects in slideshow view. Okay, nothing's movable, you can just write on it. So if you do your PowerPoint in slideshow view, it's not interactive. Okay, so um, if I am in my normal view, like this right here, I can move stuff around if I need to. So um, the, what I did last year was I kind of toggled back and forth between um, slideshow view and normal view so that I can, um, could write and um, move objects, okay, which I didn't have to do whenever it was in a flip chart. Okay, which was fine. I did that all year long last year and it worked just fine. Okay, um, it wasn't ideal, but it worked and I did it with kids and they um, did great with it. Okay, what I've figured out this summer when trying to problem solve and reflect and make everything better is um, like we teachers always do is I thought, why could I not annotate over desktop and combine all of this? Problem is, I'm stuck at my house, it's summertime, I don't have access to my smart board and um, my Active Inspire on my uh, computer doesn't have the annotate over desktop feature. So this is what I'm going to show you. Let me get out and show you this right here um, from a blog. So I just found a picture of it so I could show you. So if you have Active Inspire and I'm not as familiar with the smart board software but I'm quite sure that they offer this also. There's this little button right here in the in your toolbox and it's annotate over desktop and whenever you click that your flip chart disappears and you just have your desktop or whatever you've pulled up and then you can write on it you can use the arrow to move things still you can erase things you can um, delete the entire page of writing whatever you need to do so um, what I would do is um, pull up that math wall on your desktop open up your Active Inspire, annotate over desktop, and then you're good to go. You can write on it with your pen, and then you can click on the arrow and move things around as you need to. And whenever you move to the next slide, just clear the page, and you'll um, be able to start from scratch again. Okay? So, 
I think that's pretty awesome because you can use this and not have to toggle back and forth, which will save you some time. So let me show you um, how to do that in PowerPoint. I won't, unfortunately, won't be able to show you how to annotate over desktop without buying an expensive program for my Mac, which I don't want to do. And you shouldn't have to do as long as you have a smart board, smart board software or Promethean board software, you should be able to um, annotate over desktop pretty easily. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my PowerPoint, and I guess I could use it like this with kids, but I just want it to look a little bit prettier, so I'm going to go over here where my slide list is, and I'm just going to X that out, okay, and then up here where my boxes are, I just clicked um, the home button that's open, and I just clicked on it so that it would kind of disappear, okay. You can also go into full screen mode if you want to, let's see where that is at um, enter full screen mode um, if you wanted to which makes it a little bit cleaner um, but I think really this is just fine as it is okay so we're just gonna pretend that I have my handy dandy little toolbox there for um, with active inspire whatever it is that you have with your smart board and I'm gonna go ahead and use um, my math wall. Now what you're going to see me doing is you're going to see me flipping back and forth between um, slide show and um, normal view so I can show you how everything works but just know that if you have Active Inspire, a Promethean board, smart board or something that's related you should be able to annotate over your desktop and not have to toggle back and forth. Okay. So let's get started. This is my math wall number one. It's my first math wall of six that I have for first grade. The reason I have six, I know that's kind of an odd number, but whenever I started, our first grade um, team had six um, integrated curriculum units, um, which you can also check out at my store, my TPD store, um, if you're interested in those. But I have made a math wall that went along with each unit just to kind of keep it cohesive. So that's the reason there's six. Um, this is the first grade one that I'm going to use. I do have a second grade one available. And then, um, like I said, kindergarten will be coming soon, August 2016. Okay, there's, oopsie. I don't know what that is doing now. Okay, so sorry about that. I don't know why I added a slide in there. Um, so here's the title page. It's just there, um, your demo. I would go ahead and get rid of this demo if I were you um, because you don't, really don't have to scroll through that with kids. Um, whenever I'm using that, I just delete the slides that I don't need. So I delete the demo slide. I usually delete this one because I already have a master copy of that, so I don't need that to go through that with kids. I would go ahead and delete... Um, my July one. So you know what? Let's just do that real quick. Um, let's go in here. Let's delete that random crazy extra slide. I don't need to see the demo. I don't need to see the practice. I already have that. It's not July. It's August. Um, and I'm not even in school in July, so that's why I'm deleting that one. I will need the September one eventually, but that's all that I need. Okay. So now let's go back and try this again. Okay, so here's August. Now, one thing that I can do beforehand is go ahead and prep my calendar. So, let's see, August the 1st was on a Monday, 2016. So, I can just go in and type um, the dates. If I were you, I would do this beforehand as you're prepping everything. Okay, and get all of your dates. I'm in there. You can change your font, whatever. I just have a basic font in there that everybody has so that it won't look, look cray cray on you. Okay, and once I'm done, I'm good to go. And so um, we use this sometimes for the, especially for those people that still like to have calendar around. And then you'll notice you've got the calendar signed for the month of August, and then you've also got some movable um, objects here. Okay, so we would say, Oh, yesterday, let's get caught up to today. Yesterday was August the 3rd, so that means today is August 4th. Which picture is going to go in the box to complete the pattern? Grasshopper, bumblebee, grasshopper, bumblebee, Miss Shattuck. Do you like how I'm first graders too? <laughs> okay, and then I can add that in there, add that each day. 
Okay. The important thing that you're going to want to do is um, after this part of your slide, I would go hit on your keyboard. You can hit um, Control S to save it, or you can go right here, save, and it will save that part for you. And then that way, um, you will not have to um, redo all of your stuff every time. And I would also, at the beginning of the of the unit, go ahead and save like your math wall one, and then call it 2016, so that you still have your template, but you have your one for 2016. Then you can just delete it whenever you're done. Okay, let's skip September. This is the first page. This is what I start off with in first grade. Instead of going straight into base 10 blocks, I can compose and then I'm going to um, write the number, whatever number I want to write there. Now you would be doing this with your annotate over desktop. I don't have that, so I'm just writing that here. Okay, now on my smart board, whenever I escape, it normally will ask me to save mine, but it doesn't. But I can write the number in there. <clears throat> it doesn't on my computer, but it should on your smart board. And then I'm going to say, how can I make eight? Show me on your fingers ways to make eight. And then I'll have kids that show me um, four and four or ways. And we show it, I usually show it across two hands. And just because I'm, I don't know, crazy and like kids to move or whatever, I usually have them like knock their fists together. And then it's like one, two, bam. And then they hold up five and three or one, two, bam. And they can hold up, you know, um, four and four. Eight obviously is kind of a stretch to do that across two hands. Um, but we just kind of talk about those kinds of things. So I would show four and four. And I could also have kids come up here and do this. Or I could show another way, five and three, one and seven, however you want to show it. Okay. And then you could talk about how those are different. Okay. I would also, um, once I get this done, I would also go in and say, oh, Sammy showed his as four plus four more. Oh, Sally showed hers as five and three. Okay, and then as we move on through the weeks, and I might say 4 plus 4, or 5 plus 3, okay, and write out that notation for them, okay? All right, next slide. Now, these two are in place of the base 10 and my other math wall, so typically what I do just to save time is one day I'll do this one, the next time I'll do this one. I don't usually do both. Okay, so what I do is, which you won't do, I don't know why it's not saving it from time to time, it should. If my number's 8, then I would write 8 at the top of my caret notation. Okay, and then, um, which you're not going to be able to see it now, I'm totally sorry about that. And then I would go through here and say, 8 is... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's one way you can do this, just to give them another visual. The other thing that you can do is you can say, I can decompose this set. Let's build a set of eight and get one of your low babies that needs practice building sets and pull them up to the board and have them build eight. Six, seven, eight. Let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then um, I would go, um, how could I build eight? And somebody might say, well, I see, and you can do red and yellow if you wanted to do this yourself just to kind of help that visual. Um, if you didn't have a baby, you wanted to practice that. And you could say, well, I see two and six. And then you say, great, yes, I can break apart eight into two and a six and then in a couple weeks add the two plus the six okay how else could I break it apart and then um, I could say I could see I see four and four this is almost becoming like a number talk yes I can break apart eight into four and four okay and then um, 
that's how I would do this page okay now again I don't do both of these pages the same at the same time I guess you could but I don't just to save time I just do one or the other they're working on the same concept this is all I'm gonna have time for in this video but I'll have um, my part two video will show you the rest of this math wall